Hello everyone, I'm Ben. Welcome back to Tech Block. Today we're going to be doing a keyboard comparison video once again. This time between the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2 against the Razer Black Widow Elite keyboard, Razer's newest Black Widow keyboard at the time of recording this video. So we're going to be comparing these two keyboards. I'm going to be doing sound tests, RGB comparison, pros and cons of each keyboard really, and I guess a little mini review of each keyboard as well. So. That's all coming up in just a moment, and if you want to go check out any of my other keyboard comparison videos, I'll leave a link in the description down below to like my keyboard comparison playlist, I guess. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Both of these keyboards are featuring the Razer Green switches, however they're also available in the Razer Orange switches as well as the Razer Yellow switches. The Orange switches are tactile and silent, the Yellow switches are linear and silent, and the Razer Green switches that we have here are tactile and clicky. Both switches have an actuation force of 50 grams, a durability of 80 million keystrokes, per switch, but the green switches on the Black Widow Elite now have dual sidewalls that increase stability of the switch as well as provide protection against any dust or liquids. But despite both these switches being the Razer Greens, they do sound quite a bit different. Here's a sound test of the Razer Green switches on the Black Widow Chroma V2. And now let's listen to the Razer Green switches on the Black Widow Elite. Alright, so that was the sound test comparison for both these switches. They are still both the Razer Green switches, but the ones on the Black Widow Elite are physically different thanks to them having sidewalls to protect against dust or liquids. Another thing that might contribute to the sound of the switches being different on both of these keyboards is the bodies that the keyboards sit in. The Black Widow Chroma V2 has an all plastic body. The entire keyboard is pretty much just made out of plastic. There's no metal construction body or anything. There's no metal top plate. None of that, it's just a plastic keyboard, whereas the Black Widow Elite has a military grade metal top plate which makes the keyboard quite a bit heavier, which in my opinion is a good thing, and on top of that it just feels so much higher quality touching metal than plastic, you know. Both of these keyboards also feature audio as well as USB 2.0 pass through ports, but there is a difference in the positioning of these pass through ports. On the Black Widow Chroma V2, the pass through ports are found on the right hand side of the keyboard, whereas on the Black Widow Elite, they are found on the left hand side of the keyboard. And because these keyboards come with these pass through ports, that does mean you may need some additional USB ports at the back of your PC to plug in the actual pass through ports. Both keyboards come with these connectors, you get two USB cables as well as one audio cable. One of these USB ports being the optional USB 2.0 pass through cable that you don't have to use, it's completely optional, but all it is basically and what you can think of it as is like a USB extension cable that goes from your PC and ends in your keyboard. So you can plug any USB device you want into the side of your keyboard, such as a mouse, a headset, an extra keyboard if you want, whatever you want. I've currently got a USB fingerprint scanner plugged into the side of the keyboard to allow me to easily log into Windows via my fingerprint. Anyway, the other two cables that you get with the keyboard is another USB cable. So this one here powers the actual keyboard and all of your RGB lighting. And then finally, we have the optional audio pass-through cable. You don't have to plug this into the back of your PC if you don't want an extension cable for like an audio port at the side of your keyboard. I personally have never used the extension audio cables found in the keyboards as I don't really have headsets that have 3.5 millimeter like headphone connectors but you might, so you might find this feature useful. Another thing I like to mention about the keyboard cables is that they're both braided cables, they're both very high quality, they feel great. There's only one thick cable coming out of both of these keyboards, and that one thick cable goes into this little hub right here that then becomes three cables. So, you know, your two USB cables as well as your audio pass-through cable. All right, so we're almost done talking about the actual cables, but there is one more feature that I'd like to mention about the Black Widow Elite, and that's the cable management channel. Taking a look at the bottom of each keyboard, we have the Black Widow Chroma V2 here, the key cable comes out of the very end of the keyboard, as you can see right here. Whereas the Black Widow Elite has a cable management channel built into the keyboard, and the actual keyboard wire doesn't come out of the very end of the keyboard, it comes out beneath the keyboard right here. Which is probably one of my favourite features of this keyboard, because it allows me to make my keyboard look completely wireless if you have a hole drilled in your desk. As you never even see the cable, the cable just comes out of here and it goes straight into your desk, the cable is completely hidden away. But even if you don't have a hole drilled in your desk to route your keyboard wire through, you will appreciate having this feature around as you can route the keyboard wire either to like the right hand side of the keyboard it, through this included cable management channel, just like this. You could go out normally through the back of the keyboard or it could go 
to the left of the keyboard just like this. So it's a very useful feature in my opinion. What's also pretty cool is that you could route any other cable through this cable management channel as well. It doesn't have to just be your keyboard wire, it could be anything you want. So I've currently got a Stream Deck cable running through the bottom of the cable management channel. This feature is basically just going to help you keep cables out of sight thanks to the cable management channel. Both of these keyboards also come with anti-slip rubber pads all over them, but the ones on the Black Widow Elite are much, much bigger than the ones on the Black Widow Chroma V2. The Black Widow Elite also comes with three levels of adjustment for the actual height of the keyboard. This is level one, I guess, with all the feet being flat and the keyboard lying completely flat against your table. This is level two, I guess, with the mini feet being opened up. And then this is level three with the larger feet right here. Taking a look at the Black Widow Chroma V2, this also comes with like feet at the bottom here, but there's only one adjustment really. It's either the keyboard lies completely flat or you use the feet. Some of you will also be very happy to hear that the Black Widow Chroma V2 keyboard that I have here does come with five dedicated macro keys on the left hand side of the keyboard here, ranging from M1 all the way to M5. Now these keys can be programmed to do whatever you want. They can automate tasks for you, launch programs, type text for you, whatever you want, they're macro keys and they can be programmed in the Razer Synapse software. Also bear in mind that if you're upgrading from a keyboard that has no dedicated macro keys on the left hand side and you're upgrading to one that does have macro keys, please keep in mind that it may take some time getting used to these keys being here. So over the next couple of weeks, if not a few months, you may be typing things wrong now and again because you're just not used to these extra keys being on your keyboard. Taking a look at the Black Widow Elite, this does not have any dedicated macro keys on the left hand side of the keyboard or frankly anywhere on the keyboard. But if you really do want macro keys for your keyboard, you have a couple options. So you could program any of these keys in the Razer Synapse 3 software to become a macro key. Same goes for the Black Widow Chroma V2 as well. You can program any key to become a macro key or you could pick up a dedicated macro pad such as a Stream Deck that's what I did. I really wanted macro keys once again, so I bought a Stream Deck as the Black Widow Elite has no dedicated macro keys on the keyboard. And by the way, anything I mentioned in this video will be linked in the description down below, of course, including the keyboards, the fingerprint scanner, the Stream Deck, and everything else in my setup as well. Both of these keyboards do come with an optional wrist rest. The wrist rest attaches via magnets to the keyboard, just like that. It's a very simple wrist rest, I guess. Very, very soft as well. There is a very subtle Razer logo that's embossed in both the wrist rest as well. Probably one of the best wrist rests that you can buy for a keyboard, really. The only real differences between these two wrist rests are their dimensions. The Black Widow Chroma V2 wrist rest is ever so slightly bigger by probably like an inch or two, but that's mainly due to the keyboard being physically larger because of these extra five keys here. Another minor difference between these two wrist rests here, this one here is the Black Widow Chroma V2 one, and there is a gap between the wrist rest and the table here, as you can probably see, whereas on the Black Widow Elite wrist rest, that gap isn't really there. Both of these keyboards do also come with illuminated Razer logos right here and here, but if you do end up using the included wrist rests with your keyboard, your fancy RGB Razer logo will be hidden away. One thing you've probably noticed on the Black Widow Elite here are these keys. Now these keys are not present on the Black Widow Chroma V2 at all. So these here are multimedia keys. We have back, we have port, we have next track, and then right here we have a multifunction dial that can be programmed in the Razer Synapse software to do just about anything you want. Now I've currently programmed mine to be used to adjust the volume in Windows. So if I scroll all the way down, this will turn red indicating that the volume in Windows is currently muted. And if I scroll the other way, this LED light will become brighter and then max out and it will be completely white as you can see here. And if you want to quickly mute the audio in Windows instead of scrolling down all the way back down to zero, you can just press the mute button on top and that will turn red indicating that you've now muted the audio. Pretty cool. But as I mentioned a second ago, this can be programmed in the Razer Synapse software to do just about anything you want. I've programmed profiles in Photoshop to increase and decrease the brush size. I've also got another profile for Adobe Premiere where I use the dial to zoom in and out of my timeline. Unfortunately, the multimedia keys found on the Black Widow Elite are not present on the Black Widow Chroma V2. Instead, this section just has your caps lock indicator, your num lock, your scroll lock, as well as like your gaming mode that can be accessed by pressing FN and then gaming mode right here. Or you can also begin macro recording on the fly by pressing that button, but I'm just gonna cancel that now. So that's how this section is being used. Whereas on the Black Widow Elite, this section has been moved right here. So we have your caps lock, your scroll lock, your num lock. We can also access gaming mode as well as macro recording. But as you saw there, when you press the FN key on the Black Widow Elite, this will illuminate only the FN keys on the keyboard. So we have macro recording, we have gaming mode, brightness decrease, brightness increase, as well as sleep. And when you let go of the FN key, the RGB effects will return back to their normal state. But if we try this on the Black Widow Chroma V2, this feature is not present. Now, the moment that you've all been waiting for, let's go ahead and take a look at the RGB lighting effects of both of these keyboards. So here we have breathing. 
fire. Reactive. Ripple. Spectrum Cycle. Starlight. A static effect. Wave. All right, so as you saw there, I think the clear winner was indeed the Black Widow Chroma V2 keyboard here, mainly because the RGB lighting effects are not only shining through the actual key, they're also shining down at a white background that just makes the RGB lighting effects look so much better than the lighting effects on the Black Widow Elite. Because on this keyboard, the lighting effects are only really shining through the key and not onto a white background. Right, so let's go ahead and do a quick summary of both of these keyboards. The Black Widow Chroma V2 keyboard has dedicated macro keys on the left hand side, as well as superior RGB lighting effects all around, and it also has USB and audio pass through ports on the left hand side. The Black Widow Elite keyboard has superior build quality in my opinion, thanks to it having the military grade metal top plate on top of the keyboard, which just makes the keyboard feel much higher quality. It also has dedicated multimedia buttons as well as a multifunction dial and a mute button, on top of that dial, it has a built-in cable management channel beneath the keyboard, allowing you to cable manage not only your keyboard wire, but potentially other wires that you have lying around your desk as well. So that's a feature that everyone who cares about cable management will really appreciate. And if you've drilled a hole in your desk, the Black Widow Elite keyboard will look completely wireless. The switches on the Black Widow Elite are also ever so slightly more durable, thanks to there being the dual sidewalls on the switch, which adds some protection against any dust or liquids. The Black Widow Elite keyboard also comes with a USB 2.0 pass-through as well as audio pass-through on the right-hand side of the keyboard this time, instead of the left-hand side on the Black Widow Chroma V2. And finally, both keyboards do also come with an optional, very, very comfortable wrist rest. Right, so that's pretty much going to sum up the comparison video between these two keyboards. This is a UK layout keyboard, hence why the enter keys probably look different to whatever layout you're usually used to seeing. Anyway, hopefully you have found this video to be helpful and it's helped you decide between which one of these keyboards you like more, I guess, and which one of them suit your needs more. And I know I'm going to get quite a few comments asking me what my opinion is of these two keyboards and which one I'd go with. Personally, I'd 100% go with the Black Widow Elite. It's the newer keyboard. I believe it has superior features, minus the dedicated macro keys and I guess the slightly inferior RGB lighting. But in my opinion, it's just an all round superior keyboard, better build quality. It has the fantastic key management channel. It has the multimedia buttons, the multifunction dial. It's just a really good keyboard in general. And that's the keyboard that I'd go with. But if you really do want macro keys and if you really do like the design and the look, of the Black Widow Chroma V2, you can pick this keyboard up instead. But anyway, links to both these keyboards will be in the description down below as always. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.